Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll continue with episode 18 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering function prototypes. So in the last episode, we talked about what functions were, and we defined a few functions, which I still have here in front of me. We'll need some functions in order to demonstrate this next concept of C++, which is creating and using function prototypes. In the last episode, we defined all of our functions, so we have three here. We have fun one, fun two, and sum all above main. And we compiled our program successfully, had no issues. So let's move these functions below main. So if I copy and paste them down here, and then what I'll do is get rid of them up here at the top above main. This time I'll try compiling this program and seeing what happens. One other thing I want to do is instead of just making one function call, this sum right here function call. I'll do two more and make function calls to both fun one and fun two. And let's see if we can successfully compile this. And if you're new and stopping by, make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux operating system and programming videos. So if I open up a new terminal and I compile my prototypes.cpp file here that I've just created, I'll see a few errors. So the first error, it says fun one was not declared in this scope. So it says there's an error on line five at the call of fun one. It also says fun two was not declared in the scope as well as some. So let's go back to our program and revisit why these are errors. So the compiler said on line five, six, and seven, it didn't like something. And what it didn't like is the fact that you called this function fun one, fun two, and sum, but it couldn't make sense of what that function really was, how it's defined, and basically where to find it in the program. And the reason we're getting an error here is because main wants to call a function called fun one, fun two, and sum, but since the scope of main only resides between these curly braces, it doesn't know that these functions exist after the fact. Now it is completely okay to write these functions after the fact and outside of the scope of main, but in order for the compiler to resolve these, we must write a prototype or declaration above main. So how do we do this? It's fairly simple. And usually, at least for me, the best method is just to copy and paste these definitions up above the function calling above main or whatever function is making an actual call to another function. So if I pasted fun one up here and just put a semicolon here at the end, we'll do another one here as well for fun two. And finally, we'll copy this line here without the curly brace up top as well. So now these three are known as function prototypes or declarations. And then the definition of the function is actually below over here where you see that we define what these functions will actually be doing. So again, we can call these declarations or prototypes and then below definitions of the actual functions. Now these don't actually have to match the function definition exactly. So notice right now as I'm highlighting, everything is getting highlighted up here because it finds the exact same match. Well, we don't necessarily have to specify num1 or num2. It already knows in the definition that num1 and num2 are what's being used in the definition. So it's not necessarily needed in the prototype, but I think it's just easier in order to follow along. So for example, if I just removed num1 and num2, as long as the compiler understands that you're passing in two parameters and of what data type they are, it doesn't necessarily have to have any names because they are actually defined in the function declaration anyway. All right, so let's give this a shot real quick and see if things resolve this time. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. All right, so now if we go and compile once more, we'll see that everything compiled successfully and we got no errors. So if I just run my program real quick, we'll see that we got hello world, fun two, and the number three. Let's go back to the code and check out what happened here. So this time, when the compiler went through things, it figured out, hey, fun one, there is a prototype for fun one. So that means somewhere in this file, fun one exists. Make sure to go ahead and look for it, compile it, 
and link it in. And then when it does find the declaration of fund one, it'll perform whatever's inside the curly braces. So for this function one, when it was called, it just prints out hello world. For function two, it just prints out fund two and returns a number 10. And finally, the sum function here will take two numbers in of type float, sum them together and return that sum. So that's what we saw. We passed in one and two, added those two together, that gave us three, and that's what we got printed out to us in the terminal. So again, just to drive this one home, this prototype doesn't 100% need to match what exists in the declaration of the function. Here in the definition or prototype, you can keep the names in here or not. What's really important is that the amount of parameters match. So I have two floats that need to be passed in so it knows what data types will be passed in. This is important because you can actually redefine multiple functions of the same name with different types of parameters that need to be passed in. That's something called overloading and we'll talk about that in the future. So those are two important things. And then another one that's important of course is the float that comes first, which is the return type. So again, the compiler needs to know what the function will return. Without that, it'll be guessing. And then of course, the two names of the functions need to match. I can't call this one sum one and the other one sum two and expect the compiler to correlate those two together. So you could be asking yourself, why not just write the functions above main and call it a day? You wouldn't have any compilation issues, linking issues, everything should run just fine and compile just fine. Well, that's a perfectly legal way of doing it, but in the future, when you have many, many files to your projects and you start creating a nice structure to your project, you don't want everything to be flooded up top here before important functions like your main function, which when a user goes through your program and wants to, let's say, make some edits or even just look at it briefly, it makes it a lot easier to see the main function, which is the first function that gets executed in your program. It really just becomes convenient. Again, it's not necessary, but that's the way I like to keep my programs. I like to define prototypes or definitions up here at the top and then leave my declarations somewhere below main, especially if it's a single file program like this one is here. This is fairly simple, but it's something important to know because you can get errors and warnings if you don't understand this concept. And it can be frustrating because you see clearly that you've declared your function, but since a prototype doesn't exist, the compiler will start getting angry at you. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like this video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.